From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. Former Vice President Al Gore told Stephen Colbert on Monday that his hopes about President Trump in regards to climate change were wrong. And another poorly educated American grew their wings. Elsewhere, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell received a smackdown from politicians and pundits alike after Republican senators came out in opposition to the latest rewrite of the Republican plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senator John McCain both called for bipartisan input on health care. Leading conservative pundit Eric Erickson suggested it was time for President Trump to, quote, send McConnell to the pasture. To which McConnell replied, quote, I don't live in a pasture, I live on an island plantation. And as much as breathing is important to me, we all stop breathing eventually. So come on and get yourself some of this bourbon flavored sponge. It'll all be okay. Russian authorities are investigating fidget spinners after state-owned news media claimed that the popular toy was being sold at opposition rallies and used to attract Putin supporters. Meanwhile in America, wagers are already being made if after this Wednesday, Donald Trump Jr. will be looking for political asylum in Mother Russia to eventually spend the rest of his life trying to handcraft and make a profit out of fidget spinners. As long as those two don't blow up in his face. This has been an Obsolete Night News Brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is an Obsolete Night News Brief. In a crushing blow to President Trump's mission to win so much that the American public would be sick of winning, Trump fired his communications director, Anthony Scaramucci, this past Monday. Also a crushing defeat for a slither of the American public who were chomping at the bit to hear mainstream journalists and reporters publicly refer to the non-rooster sequitur. Outspoken Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte fired verbal bombs at North Korean leader Kim Jong-un calling him a, quote, fool and a, quote, son of a, well, unnamed goat. Duterte, also well known for both his violent rhetoric and the literal murdering of citizens and journalists alike in his country's war on drugs, has been calling for Kim Jong-un to cease test launching ICBMs towards the U.S., which officials have said could reach as far in the mainland as Washington, D.C. In response, Defense Secretary Mad Dog Mattis is hoping to bring both leaders together to pursue what he calls Operation Stephen Wright, which would isolate both men in the same room to let them fight it out. Studies showed that the Earth's temperature could rise by more than 2 degrees Celsius by the end of the century, and 150 million people worldwide could suffer from protein deficiency by 2050. In preparations for this climate change purge, Al Gore has already announced the release of an inconvenient trilogy with the tagline, if you can't stand the heat, say goodbye to steak and eggs for breakfast, cow pies. More news later. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. After signing into law the congressional bill imposing sanctions on Russia, President Trump criticized the House and Senate who overwhelmingly voted in favor of the legislation. He stated, quote, Congress could not even negotiate a health care bill after seven years of talking. As president, I can make far better deals with foreign countries than Congress. After one of his aides told the president that making deals with foreign countries was, in fact, his job, the president then stated, You see, just had another job. Economy's booming. Great jobs. Steve Jobs couldn't make great jobs like I'm making great jobs. Now he's dead. Dead as apples. Michael Strahan missed this past Tuesday's edition of Good Morning America because of an accident which caused him to lose a bit of his pinky finger. Strahan did not initially comment on how his pinky was hurt. He is not the first New York Giant to lose appendages. Jason Pierre-Paul had his right index finger amputated in 2015 due to an incident involving fireworks. While back in 1978, the density of the smoggy New York air blew up both of quarterback Joe Pisarczyk's hands in the final 30 seconds of a regular season game against Philadelphia. Los Angeles is set to host the 2028 Summer Olympic Games, the third time for the city and first time since 1984. By that point, it will have been so hot in California, the ghost of Johnny Carson will have rose from the sweltering heat, dressed as Karnak, ready to engulf the entire stadium. This has been an Oscillate Night News Brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is an Oscillate Night News Brief. 
52% of respondents to an NPR PBS NewsHour poll said that President Trump's response to the domestic terrorism last weekend in Charlottesville, Virginia was not strong enough. Despite congressional Republican outcry against Trump's both sides comment, 59% of identified Republicans did think the president's response was strong enough. Strong enough for the 1950s in America, but made for the 1930s in Germany. Silicon Valley has universally taken a stand against white supremacists since last Saturday, with Google, Twitter, Spotify, GoDaddy, and other companies cracking down and blocking neo-Nazi groups and individuals from their services. This could prove to be a double-edged sword in the long term, with the floating Restoring Internet Freedom proposal by FCC Chairman Ajit Pai, which could kill net neutrality principles and allow internet service providers from blocking and throttling anti-racist online content. Unless you pay a hefty premium to prove racism should die in a corporate America. After being together for eight years after meeting each other at a New York City gym, 94-year-old Alvin Mann and 98-year-old Gertrude Mokotov got married in a small ceremony in Middletown, New York in front of family and friends. After the ceremony, it was reported that Alvin had announced to the attendees that he and Gertrude will soon be celebrating the birth of their first child together a blushing 67-year-old baby boy named Ronald. More news later. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. In the immediate aftermath of the disbanding of the American Manufacturing Council and the President's Strategy and Policy Forum, the stock market remained positive on Wednesday with the Dow Jones Industrial Average closing up 25 points. Numerous CEOs defected from both groups after President Trump's rogue press conference, putting equal blame on all involved in the happenings in Charlottesville last Saturday. One of the CEOs who stepped down, who wished to remain anonymous, was quoted as saying, It's not that the president was shooting at the hip. I just can't pop the collar of my business suit in peace anymore before people think I'm a Nazi who can commit vehicular manslaughter at any moment. David Mueller, a radio DJ in Colorado, accused of grabbing Taylor Swift's bare butt in a photo the two took together in 2013, reiterated his case on Good Morning America despite losing his trial and damages totaling $1, making it the cheapest unattractive radio DJ to beautiful superstar entertainer grope caught on camera. Since my compromising hug captured by the paparazzi to Melina Kankakrides, what can I say? Once you go Greek, you'll never go meek. New England Patriots head coach Bill Belichick blew off a fairly insignificant preseason loss last week to the Jacksonville Jaguars by repeating the phrase, there are a lot of things we need to work on five different times in his post-game press conference, which averages to one utterance for every time the Patriots have spied, deflated, and falcon-punched their opposition on the way to a Super Bowl. But they still couldn't beat the Giants twice. This has been a not-so-late night news brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. On Monday afternoon, President Trump momentarily stared into the sky during the solar eclipse, risking burning permanent holes into his eyes. While on Monday evening, the President addressed a viewing audience to announce his commitment to increased military action in Afghanistan, possibly risking burning permanent holes into his brain. On his Tuesday trip to a rally in Arizona, Trump indulged in nine different orders of KFC's Nashville Hot Chicken apparently destroying his taste buds. As they become available, we'll have further updates on this story as he continues his quest to permanently destroy the last feeling in him, touching the hearts of majorities of Americans. John Bones Jones was flagged for a possible doping violation during the weigh-in for his fight with Daniel Cormier last month. Jones tested positive for Turinable, which carries a penalty of two to four years suspension for usage. Rumors have developed lately over the possibility of a Bones Jones super fight with present WWE Universal Champion Brock Lesnar, who was suspended by the UFC for failed drug tests in conjunction with his UFC 200 fight against Mark Hunt. Octagon fans need not worry, as both parties are searching for loopholes in the hopes to schedule that super fight for 2018 under the tagline of Bones vs. Brock, First Blood vs. First Sweat. This has been a not so late night news brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not so late night news brief. Despite President Trump's promise to invest billions of dollars to rebuild East and Southeast Texas, 
from the damages of Hurricane Harvey, House Republicans look to cut $876 million from FEMA's disaster relief account in an effort to fund the president's proposed wall along the Mexican border. In the event Republicans double turn on the cuts, the president will look to Pastor Joel Osteen to purchase swamp land along the Rio Grande. At a private meeting of young Republicans in California, Representative Duncan Hunter reportedly told an attending group about President Trump, quote, He's just like he is on TV. He's an a-hole, but he's our a-hole. In typical Trump fashion, he took to Twitter to respond. Privileged to receive warm words from Duncan Hunter in California. But I'm not just our a-hole, I'm your a-hole. And your b-hole, and your c-hole, and your defense, and your f-troop, and your g-spot, and your h-bomb, and your k-pants, and your x-files. The truth is out there, fake news made Gorka resign! Conor McGregor received a two-month medical suspension in the aftermath of his 10-round loss in the money fight to Floyd Money Mayweather. During his time away, McGregor has been authorized 25 hours of weekend community service by the Nevada State Athletic Commission to go out and shoot up however many alligators it took to make that stupid-looking money belt. Comedian Kathy Griffin announced her Laugh Your Head Off World Tour, set to begin in New Zealand next month. Subsequently, far-right extremists across 14 countries announced their Kathy Griffin Chop Her Head Off World Tour. This has been a not-so-late-night news brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. Billionaire Elon Musk tweeted that a worldwide race for artificial intelligence could be the most likely cause of World War III. More than likely World War IV, as millions of Americans are banking on the worldwide race for natural stupidity as the prime cause of World War III. Prior to the announcement of the rescinding of DACA, 76% of respondents to a Politico poll supported keeping dreamers in America. 58% of those polled believe dreamers should be able to become American citizens if they meet certain requirements. While 24% of respondents just wish you could leave them the hell alone to feast on enchilada supremas and bootleg episodes of American Gladiators with Spanish commentary. TV host Maria Menounos told TMZ during her fight to beat brain cancer back in June, she sought inspiration by watching the 2006 hit Rocky Balboa. In response, the real Rocky Balboa was quoted saying, Re, re, this old still, I'm gonna lunge and beat the snot out of that golf ball. Rocky then punched out a whole carton full of eggs, reportedly still mentally and physically shaken from his last fight against heavyweight champion Mason Dixon. More news later. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. Facebook Inc. is reporting that the platform's total reach to people in the U.S. exceeds more than the number of people living in America. Its ad manager says the social network can reach 162 million people from all age groups of 18 to 49 years. While census data from last year indicates there were only 137 million people living in America. To which President Trump rebuked, I was right! Unemployment was 48%. Why are you lazy bums sitting and looking at memes? Get your fake fat turkey thighs up and build my wall! Dallas Cowboys running back Ezekiel Elliott will play tomorrow night for the Cowboys' season opener against the New York Giants, despite his six-game suspension being upheld for violating the NFL's personal conduct policy. Of course, as history has shown, it has never been unbecoming of the New York Giants to reflect heroism, face of palpitating rule-breaking and moral inferiority of their opponents. Right, New England? On Good Morning Great Britain, Dennis Rodman said he would be willing to quote-unquote straighten things out when it comes to the ongoing tensions between North Korea and the United States. Upon his many trips to North Korea, Rodman and Kim Jong-un forged a friendship through basketball. With both Trump's and Rodman's previous connections with professional wrestling, Dennis hopes to strike a peace deal, as well as send out a call to Hulk Hogan to sign Kim Jong-un on for a second season of Hulk Hogan's Celebrity Championship Wrestling. This has been a Not So Late Night News Brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a Not So Late Night News Brief. French businesswoman Samira Amarir has invented a Barbie-like doll named Jenna that recites at least four chapters from the Koran. 
Amarir hopes to teach young children, including her own daughter, about the Islamic faith. The doll is now on sale in most Gulf Arab countries and comes equipped with Jenna's own personal robe, headscarf, book bag, bomb, detonator, noose, assault rifle, and of course Jenna's dreamboat jihadist husband, Bavar. The Philippine Congress voted this past week to slash the budget for the country's Commission for Human Rights from $14.7 million to just $19.63. While the blood of President Rodrigo Duterte's enemies remains at a surplus to what Duterte himself referred to as, quote, We measure success, one killing of a son of a bitch at a time. Geno Smith, now the backup quarterback to Eli Manning in New York, fired back on Twitter at local radio personality Craig Carton, who was recently arrested by the FBI on fraud charges, tweeting, Same guy who was calling me a thug on some lame radio station was running a Ponzi scheme? Funny how life works. Can't believe these fools. In response to Carton's arrest, Susan Waldman, another frequent target of Carton, stated simply, Goodness gracious. Oh my good goodness gracious! This has been a not-so-late-night news brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. Senators Bill Cassidy and Lindsey Graham co-authored the Senate Republicans' 47,296th and latest attempt this year to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. Their bill had gained traction among their Republican colleagues this past week as they looked to pass it with 50 votes before next Saturday. Except for Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, who called the Graham-Cassidy measure, quote, Amnesty for Obamacare to which many of the elderly Republican base thought Senator Paul was actually saying, um, nasty Obamacare. In the aftermath of President Trump's rocket man speech to the United Nations, UN Ambassador Nikki Haley stated that the President did not want to go to war with North Korea and would continue to seek a diplomatic solution. When asked about Trump's usage of the nickname Rocket Man, Haley said, quote, I had a meeting with the president of Uganda the day before, and he was referring to Kim Jong-un as Rocket Man before the president even gave the speech. President Museveni also told me I had such a pretty smile that I could either sell toothpaste or send Kim's missiles bang zoom to Neptune instead of the U.S. ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, and Fox News have all passed on hiring former press secretary Sean Spicer to be a contributor to their networks. But executives at Warner Brothers reportedly are looking to bank on casting Spicer for a future sequel to the 2014 movie Tammy to play the titular character. More news later. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. Publishers Weekly reports that Hillary Clinton's new memoir, What Happened, sold more than 300,000 copies in its first week. The Consumer Product Safety Commission website has already been flooded with hundreds of complaints about the book, calling for a recall because many of its buyers have been showing both remorse and extreme soreness to the glutes when leaving a bathroom. In a related story, the book's title has drawn the ire of Mike LaFontaine, well known in recent years as the manager to the folk music group The New Main Street Singers. LaFontaine is planning to sue for copyright infringement as he claims the phrase is his complete intellectual property dating back to his role in a 1970s sitcom called What Happened? In a statement to the press, LaFontaine said, quote, Crooked Hillary wants to put me in a cell with a long hose? I don't think so! Disney's 75% stake in BAMTech, the digital streaming arm of Major League Baseball and other services, was signed off by the federal government. In addition to the launch of an over-the-top streaming service for Disney starting in 2019, in a bit of corporate synergy with its other offered services, PGA Tour Live will broadcast the annual Goofy Golf Desert Classic, WWE Network will present its exclusive program Total Minis, and HBO Now will stream a 10-episode miniseries in the tradition of The Sopranos, starring the return of Phineas and Ferb. Because we all really wish they could have just found a way to blow Candace's freaking head clean off, right? This has been a not so late night news brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. Republican leaders canceled this past week's vote on Lindsey Graham and Bill Cassidy's measure to repeal and replace Obamacare. By the formal announcement of its cancellation, Senators Rand Paul, Susan Collins, and John McCain planned to vote no on the bill. 
leaving Republicans once again a vote short of getting their landmark passage, and thereby certifying this latest failure to pass a health care bill as Golden Tate Syndrome. Under Obamacare, GTS is not classified as a pre-existing condition. President Trump will soon give a directive to the Department of Education to commit $200 million in STEM funding to computer science education for K-12 students. The directive reads, Only 40% of U.S. schools teach computer science. We must train our teachers and give our students the opportunity to achieve success and teach them how to use Twitter so they can learn how to rant about beaten Crooked Hillary, the NFL owners, and Rocket Man. Speaking of Rocket Man, I'm just about to let one launch on the toity. It smells like a doobie. Don't wake Jeff Sessions. The Environmental Protection Agency is spending $25,000 to build a soundproof phone booth for EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt. EPA spokeswoman Liz Bowman said the booth will serve as a secured communication area where calls are not subject to hackings or security breaches. And in the event of catastrophic hurricanes and heavy flooding, the booth will double over as a flotation device affectionately known to EPA staffers as Scott Pruitt's carbon-fused booze cruise. More news later. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. Concerned citizens disappointed that last Saturday did not see the end of the world will be happy to know that Christian numerologist David Mead predicts that the new end of days for our planet will come on October 21st. Mead claims that October will be the month of action and mark the beginning of seven years of the tribulation period of war and disaster. When it was finally made mention to him of the results of last year's presidential election, the after effects of Hurricanes Irma, Harvey, and Maria, and the ramifications of Kim Jong-un's constant nuclear threats, Meade told a reporter, quote, And I thought that was just the eucalyptus talking. American households made gains in median net worth by 16% between 2013 and 2016, according to a new Federal Reserve survey. The median net worth rose to $97,000, while the average income in that same time period rose to $102,000. Median wealth for the richest 10% of all American families increased by 40% to more than $1.5 million, while the 1% richest families hold 39% of U.S. wealth. The math for the Federal Reserve Survey was done by 13-year-old Buddy Dunphy of Goffstown, New Hampshire, whose parents, unlike most poor and middle-class Americans, have a sound mind when it comes to common core mathematics. The makers of Words with Friends have added 50,000 new playable words to the game's social dictionary, including Fitzpo, Angry, Bay, B-A-E, Queen, K-W-E-E-N, Yaz, Y-A-S, and Turnt. It is projected by the end of 2018 that untreated depression will be overtaken by Scrabble, as a leading cause of suicide by millennial-aged teens and young adults. This has been a Not So Late Night News Brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a Not So Late Night News Brief. President Trump fired back at NBC after the network reported exclusively about his request to expand the U.S. nuclear arsenal, which sent shockwaves through many military and senior administration officials. Trump then suggested revoking NBC's broadcasting license, tweeting, With all of the fake news coming out of NBC and the networks, at what point is it appropriate to challenge their license? Bad for country. Why did fake NBC News fire Norm MacDonald from the NBC Nightly News? He always told it like it was. Murder was legal in California. OJ was a good man. Bill should have put a cap inside Crooked Hillary's head. Charles Rocket was a patriot. Colin Quinn was a fluke. Fake news is real to me, damn it! In the aftermath of sexual abuse revelations pointed at Harvey Weinstein, actor Terry Crews spoke out on Twitter revealing that an unnamed male executive had groped him last year at a Hollywood function. Crews expressed his restraint from retaliating for that event against the executive saying the headline that following day would have read 240 pound black man stomps out Hollywood honcho. Cruz later tweeted, quote, Hollywood is not the only business where this happens, and to the casualties of this behavior, you are not alone. 
Just wear a bear glove next time and fight filthy fingers with p p p p p p p power This has been a not so late night news brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not so late night news brief. After last week's report that Russia had been using the game Pokemon Go to meddle with American politics in the specific issue of police brutality, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte, in his country's continuous war on drugs with a mission to murder those of his fellow citizens who use them, is looking to advance his cause by way of World of Warcraft. Because as Duterte himself says, quote, if you're going to Azeroth just to ingest some blood thistle, I guess I'm going to have to let a son of a know who the real rogue orc is around here. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin told Politico on Wednesday the Republicans' plan for tax reform will include breaks for the wealthy. This alongside the party's ambition to lower the corporate tax rate from 36% to just 20%. Mnuchin said in his interview, quote, it's very hard not to give tax cuts to the wealthy with tax cuts to the middle class. The math, given how much you are collecting, is just hard to do. Did I mention that this tax plan was created through the miracle of Common Core? 31-year-old Juan Garcia Nunez of Streeter entered a blind guilty plea this past Monday to one count of residential burglary after stealing women's underwear from an Ottawa home in October of last year. Garcia Nunez faces 4 to 15 years in prison, the possibility of a drug and alcohol probation period, or the option of burying himself underneath the garments of flour that many of men have already died under. More news later. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not so late night news brief. In a time capsule story, 54 year old Sheila Keen Warren was arrested in Virginia last month over the shooting death of her ex-husband's new wife back in 1990. New DNA evidence detected Keen Warren as the murderer, although she had been the focus of the investigation from the very outset of the murder. More noteworthy is that Keen Warren committed her crime while disguised as a circus clown. Though detectives were almost immediately tipped off by a note left behind from Sheila for her ex-husband Michael, which read, Sleepo's got a magic trick for you. Megyn Kelly's hour of the Today Show has continued its sharp TV ratings nosedive, according to Page Six, with a 0.54 rating for the episode on October 10th. Receiving a 1.0 Nielsen rating for a TV show translates to 1,102,000 households watching a particular show, while a 0.54 TV rating translates to the possible blood alcohol level of many of Megyn Kelly's Today Show audience. Monica Lewinsky tweeted the hashtag MeToo, a trend used by women and celebrities alike on social media who have been subject to unwelcoming sexual advances. Meanwhile, former President Bill Clinton was reportedly scolded for attempting to send a direct message to Lewinsky on Twitter using the hashtag Take Two. This has been a not so late night news brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not so late night news brief. Arizona Senator Jeff Flake shook the Washington landscape, stunned political observers, and stirred the pot all in one with his announced departure from the Senate once his term concludes in January 2019. Flake joins his fellow GOP senator and recently outspoken critic of President Trump, Bob Corker of Tennessee, in pending retirement and a proud suite in the Rich Tan Guys Railing on Rich Orange Guys Club. Prior to the announcement, many informal polls have already predicted a switch in Senate control after the 2018 midterm elections from Republicans to Democrats, or as they are more commonly called, the Rich Melting Pot Railing on Poor Folks on Pot Club. According to Alaskan Senator Dan Sullivan, he and fellow colleague Lisa Murkowski implored President Trump not to reverse former President Obama's 2015 executive order that renamed Alaska's Mount McKinley to Denali, a move which peeved lawmakers and citizens from Ohio, which was the home of the mountain's former namesake, former President and Ohio Governor William McKinley. In his March meeting with the Alaskan Senators, Trump said, quote, All right, we won't do that, but I'm warning you guys, these Athabascans if they're anything like the Ohioans, and the Talibanians, and the illegal aliens, and the Puerto Ricans, and the Al Jazeerians, and the Rocketmanians, and the Animaniacs, and all of these bad hombres, 
We have to fight with fire and fury and freaking laser beams. You think the mountain should be named after Ted McGinley? Jefferson Darcy was a man's man. Lonnie always asked me to take her to the nudie bars, but I tell her, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. More news later. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. The Federal Communications Commission voted to eliminate the main studio rule, which required broadcast stations to maintain a physical presence in their primary local coverage areas. Opponents of the move suggest big media companies such as Sinclair Broadcast Group can easily consolidate their operations in local markets at the expense of local origination programming and information. Supporters of the move say the rule is unnecessary, as telecommunications and social media have evolved, and its repeal is a cost-saving measure to allow for stations to spend on other broadcasting means for staff and programming as well as for merchandise sales of Sinclair commissioned print-out TV guides with a multi-page pictorial of senior political analyst Boris F. Stein provocatively riding ICBM missiles and other military-grade artillery through a plethora of rural American locales. Michael Bay has signed on to the future full-length live-action version of Dora the Explorer, set to be released in 2019. Bay is already collaborating with the film's screenwriter Nick Stoller on late changes to the script. In the reported new version of the film, a teenage Dora moves to the city with her cousin Diego, who inadvertently spontaneously combusts in his fight for survival against a treacherous army of goblin Golord ICE agents. The film's new working title is The Swipening 2045. This has been an Oxalate Night News Brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. Former House Speaker John Boehner revealed to Politico last Sunday that after a scathing address against him on the Senate floor in 2013 by then-Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, Boehner confronted Reid with profanities, having told Reid, quote, Harry, you can go f*** yourself. You ever listen to that that comes out of your mouth? In the profile, Boehner also referred to Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio and former Representative Jason Chaffetz of Utah as poles, and described a time where another fellow representative put a knife to his throat during a debate about earmarks. And miraculously, it was after reading the article that President Trump reportedly could not respond in sailors' condescension or pass a bowel movement during his trademark morning tweet storm. Just prior to the first indictments by Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller in the Russia investigation, Senator Rand Paul and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie both commented speculative statements regarding President Trump's 2020 re-election plans. Senator Paul said there could very well be a Republican primary for the next presidential election, while Governor Christie said he would support Trump, but wouldn't be sure what could happen between now and 2020. Meantime, our Not So Late Night News time-traveling correspondent reports that by 2020, the then-former governor turned Grand Sumo Champion Chris Christie will have consumed majority mass quantities at the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, the Texas State Fair, and the Sirius Fourth celebrations, and follows in the footsteps of his idol Yokozuna to be the heaviest WWE Champion in history. More news later. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a not-so-late-night news brief. Adding salt to the wounds of the Cleveland Browns faithful over the botched non-attempt at acquiring former Patriots backup quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo, it was reported that USC Trojans starting quarterback Sam Darnold has decided to hold back on his football future depending on whether the Browns secure the number one pick in the 2018 NFL Draft. If Cleveland has the number one pick for 2018, Darnold reportedly will stay in school at Southern California. It is also reported that the Browns could very well be looking towards former Chicago Cubs pitching coach Chris Fazio to be Cleveland's unofficial quarterback soothsayer. In a recent interview, Pope Francis admitted that he catches a nap or two while praying, telling the program Catholic TV 2000 that while his fast-paced schedule does still leave room for his nightly seven-hour sleeping arrangements, he does sneak in long periods of snoozing during prayer while managing to resuscitate energy whenever his fellow Roman Catholics come to meet him. It is also reported that the 80-year-old pontiff sometimes also attempts to get more shut-eye 
courtesy of a trick he saw while watching George Costanza attempt to evade the presence of New York Yankees owner George Steinbrenner on an episode of Seinfeld in 1996. Tiger Woods has announced his return to golf at this December's Hero World Challenge in the Bahamas, where he will hit a 75, a fire hydrant, a tree, several hedges, and three other nightclub mistresses to win the honorary Hero World Challenge trophy, notably shaped like a golden nine iron bent in the shape of Tiger Woods' head. This has been a Not So Late Night News Brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a Not So Late Night News Brief. On Fox News on Monday, House Speaker Paul Ryan dismissed criticism of his tweet praying for victims of last Sunday's Sutherland Springs shootings. Arguing that praying works and saying it was disappointing that the quote, far secular left, or quote, people who do not have faith or who don't understand faith, would not join in prayer. Meantime, over 900 people who have been eternally affected by gun violence and sent to a place of faith since Las Vegas remain looking for prayers. Syria, which had alongside of the United States been the only country to not sign on to the landmark Paris Climate Agreement, officially signed on to the accord this past Tuesday. Said President Trump in a since-deleted tweet, quote, One is the Trumpiest number that you'll ever do. Two can be as bad as one, but Syria still has ISIS, let's burn this mother down. California is preparing for the state's legalization of recreational marijuana sales in 2018 by utilizing armored cars to transport hundreds of millions of dollars in annual tax payments. Because of POTS illegal status under federal law, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, the nation's most notable marijuana opponent, plans to utilize his first line of defense, a kidnapped Cheech Marin on a forklift preparing for his waterboarding. More news later. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a Not So Late Night News Brief. Stephen Hawking, known recently for his dire warnings about artificial intelligence, spoke to the Tencent WE Summit in Beijing, China last week to make the bold prediction that within 600 years, the increasing world population will consume enough of Earth's energy to turn the planet into a, quote, ball of fire. Further adding, quote, Earth will be a burning thing. It'll make a fiery ring, bound by wildfire. The casualties beyond mild, hearts falling like a child. Down, 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 and the flames get higher. Burns, burns, burns. The ball of fire. The ball of fire. Researchers at the University of Michigan discovered that 55% of respondents who reported being spanked more frequently as children were more likely to suffer from mental illnesses and suicidal thoughts, and more at risk to take in heavy alcohol and street drug use. 22% of those previously spanked as children reported later that as adults, they saw visions of Harvey Weinstein dancing in their heads, screaming, Make me a toddler, big boy. This has been a Not So Late Night News Brief. From 94.5 WRWO, this is a Not So Late Night News Brief. A radio station in Malmo, Sweden, was overtaken by ISIS for roughly 30 minutes with a repeated loop of an English-language pop song titled For the Sake of Allah, urging listeners to join or be recruited by the jihadist movement. San Francisco Bay Area radio listeners will remember a similar stunt back in 2014 by KVBF-FM when in preparation for a change in formats to hip-hop music, the station played Nelly's 2002 hit, Hot in Here, on a loop for 18 hours straight. For many music lovers, it is common knowledge that not only is playing Nelly on an endless loop in 2017 an act of domestic terrorism, but the chances that rhythmless, awkward white dudes will feel like busting loose and touching you only grow greater. It may not particularly end well for your naked and hanging tree stump limbs. Late last week, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte, whose country's drug crackdown has resulted in more than 3,900 people being killed, proposed hosting an international human rights summit. Duterte threatened a ban on two U.S. lawmakers critical of his alleged human rights violations, including Illinois Representative Randy Holtgren. Duterte added, quote, 
What made you think that I am even planning or thinking about visiting your country? Have you looked in the mirror lately? Shootings in a church and prayer is your only recourse. You ought to be lucky I wasn't born in Adam and Eve's time. Either they were using those trees to protect their body and blood, or I would have had to kill two more sons of <laughs> Drugs are bad, okay? This has been an Not So Late Night News Brief.